Hello, in this video we are going to practice k-means clustering using R Studio. So we're going to use a Wine data set from the University of California, Irvine. And to do that I'm going to store the URL in a variable here, wine URL, and uh, we'll just pull this wine data from, uh, from this. And we, when we read this into a table we will need to uh, add the headers or column names. So we're going to use this argument call names and then um, provide these columns. So we'll have cultivar, alcohol, malic acid, ash, um, alkalinity, magnesium, phenols, flavonoids, um, non-flavonoid phenols, proanthocyan, color intensity, hue, and then uh, some measure here and proline. And then when we pull that in, uh, we'll uh, inspect our data like we usually do to make sure that it worked. Um, okay, so this looks good. Everything pulled in. We've got 14 columns, um, so we're happy with that. Um, the first column is the cultivar, so that is too correlated with group membership. So in, for the purposes of k-means, we're trying to to unsupervised cluster uh, use unsupervised learning to cluster. So we'll remove that column by using this uh, this function here. So we'll take wine train. We'll call that our training data set, and then we'll pull um, all of the columns where the uh, names do not equal cultivar. Okay, so the first thing we need to do when we run k-means clustering is to specify the number of clusters. We know there are three cultivars, so we're going to start with three clusters, but um, clustering has a random component, so we're going to set a seed to get reproducible results. So I've set the seed to 365 um, just to, to tie into the class. And then I'm going to uh, take this variable wine k3. So that's what I'm naming my uh, k-means model. And I'm going to use the k-means function where uh, my data set is the wine train data set. So the one with the cultivar column removed. And I'm setting centers equal to three. So when I do that, I get a result of uh, three clusters, and the cluster sizes are 62, 69, and 47. So they're um, relatively evenly dispersed. And then uh, this is a little hard to read, so we're going to use a special library to plot our k-means called useful. So we'll call the library, and then we'll plot um, our model a lot and then specify the data as the wine train data set. So when we do that, we get this nice graph here with the results. We can see that we have these three clusters. They look pretty fairly separated. Um, so that's not too bad. Uh, we could pass cultivar as the true membership column and then see if we have good clustering. So basically we're gonna add another dimension of shapes. And what we would want to see in a cluster is mostly primarily one shape. So you can see in cluster one, or cluster three here, sorry, the blue, it's almost all cultivar one. There's a triangle there, but it looks pretty good. I don't see a lot of squares. For cluster two, there's definitely more mixing here. Um, and then cluster three, you can see a lot of triangles, but also a lot of squares. So we chose three clusters because we knew that there were three cultivars. However, there is some uh, mathematical computation that goes into choosing the right amount. And if you do it incorrectly, it's wildly uh, unhelpful. So, but with R, we can use that useful package that we loaded to help in analyzing the right number of clusters. So if we didn't know where to start, we would try these techniques in order to help um, kind of determine a starting point for our clusters. So we're going to take a new variable wine best and store in that variable um, the results of this fit k means function. We're going to feed in our training data and we're going to say no more than 20 clusters um, and uh, we're going to use this argument and start 25 to help. Um, it just kind of helps the k-means algorithm run, um, and then we'll set the seed again. So when we do this, let's um, hold enter just to run, just to look at it. 
it's going to take a minute to run. So it's, there it goes. Um, okay, so this is not super helpful just on its own to look at. So we're going to use this plot cardigan function in order to kind of see what this looks like. So, all right, we're looking for the clusters to drop, first drop down to this line here. And so the first time that happens is at 11. So this is a suggesting potentially 11 cl clusters. In the book, um, they started a different seed and it optimized out at 13 clusters. Um, but, but for the seed that we chose, it's suggesting 11. And we know there are three cultivars, so that's sort of implying that maybe um, our clustering model wasn't super great. Um, if we uh, run this table function here with the class, um, the cultivar variable, and then our um, model clusters, we get this table here, and this is basically creating a confusion matrix. So that's what the table does. It creates a, a, a confusion matrix for us, but it's hard to, to interpret. So we're going to plot the confusion matrix, and we'll just plot basically this table function here, and then we'll label it and put an X label and a Y label. So the X axis is going to be the cultivar, and the Y axis is going to be the cluster. And what we would like to see is basically a really nice diagonal where, um, but in this case you can see, so for cultivar one, most of it was cl in cluster three. So that's not too terrible. And then for cluster two, kind of the same thing. Um, however, in cluster three, there's, all right, sorry, in cultivar three, there's a good amount of mixing of clusters here. So between clusters, especially between clusters one and two. So um, yeah, this confusion matrix is kind of helping us interpret the results of our model and it suggests that perhaps it's not the best uh, model. Um, now, uh, there's another way to try and figure out the right amount of clusters, and it's called the gap statistic. So we're going to try that as well to see if we get something much different than 11. Um, so we need this cluster library. So if you don't have it, you'll need to install it first. And then we're going to call it, and we're going to run this cluster gap um, function on the wine train data. We're going to set the max to 20 like we did before. And then this is going to take a minute to run, so we'll just pause for a second and let that go. Okay, so that took a minute to run, and it's done now. So we're going to store um, the the results from this uh, cluster gap function as a data frame, just the tab part of it. And then um, when we look at that, we get this table here. So we can see we have um, some columns. We have log w, e, log w, gap, and then the standard error. So we want to plot the log curves here, um, and then we'll be able to interpret the results of this. So in order to do that, we're going to run a ggplot of our data aesthetic where we set x equal to 1 from, from 1 to the number of rows of our um, gap df variable. And so that would be 20 in this case. And we can see that right here. And then uh, the, we're going to plot a line of the log w in blue and um, points along that line and also in blue. And then a line for the e log w in green. And same thing with points. And we're going to label the x-axis number of clusters so we know what we're, we've got going on. And when we run that, it looks like this. So we're basically looking for the point at which the gap is the smallest, and upon visual inspection, it appears that that would be five clusters. So it's a lot different than 11. Um, let's take a look at the gap curve. And so to do that, 
Same thing, we're going to plot the gap df data with the x equals 1 to the number of rows. Uh, but this time, we're just going to do a line, a red line, for the gap uh, variable and the points along that line in red. And then we're going to add the error bar, since we have the standard error for each point. And so our y min will be the gap minus the standard error, and the y max will be the gap plus the standard error uh, variable. And then we'll also make those red and add a label. And when we run this graph, we get this result here. So uh, that kind of confirms that 5 is the, the, uh, the point at which our gap statistic is the lowest. Um, so if we knew that the number of cultivars was 3 um, and this was suggesting 5, we can see uh, you know, why our model wasn't exactly that great. Um, but if we didn't know the number of cultivars and we were just, you know, trying to figure out a good place to start, this is suggesting that we would start with five clusters. And if you're really curious and you want to know what it would look like with five, we can actually come back up here and try it out. So let's run... A line k5. We'll set the centers equal to 5. And run that. And then we can see that we get uh, cluster sizes anywhere between 23 and 49. Um, and then if we want to visualize that we could do so. Um, so that's how our five clusters would look. Um, and then if we wanted to kind of compare what's going on, um, this will look a little funny because we only have three, we have five clusters and three cultivars. But you can see, for example, like cluster one is really good. It's all points. And then cluster two looks like it almost split the uh, first cultivar into two clusters. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And then we have this cluster, the, well, um, so that was cluster five, and this is cluster three. And then we've got cluster four here, which looks not so great. It's got a little bit of everything in it. Same with uh, cluster one here although it looks to be kind of a mix of cultivars two and three. And then um, our second cluster appears to be almost all of cultivar two. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of what that would look like. But again, we knew that there were three cultivars, so um, that doesn't, doesn't help us too much. Um, we could, you know, continue on um, with the same process. And uh, if we didn't know how many cultivars there are, we might run with that and then generate the confusion confusion matrix and try to figure out, based on the clustering, um, what why those groups are similar. But anyway, for the purposes of this uh, basic kind of tutorial to k-means, we just wanted to kind of see how that works and then cover some techniques for establishing the uh, number of, of clusters if we don't know where to start.